So I taking a four walk by herself. She was five months, two days ago. So just to familiarize that with the color around her neck. It's a little big, but say what? Jump. She moving kind of funny with it. <laughs> she's feeling this thing around her neck. So she probably feels she's still tied. Because normally, from the time I remove her rope, she's gone. <laughs> Just for to familiarize herself with the color because she will need it. Just her actions alone and her attitude. She will need it. She now realize she's free. Using her nose plenty. She's still not moving like herself. Right, she's just feeling out the color, familiarizing herself with the weight on her neck. First time wearing the color, so she will need to get adjusted to it. So, I'm, a disclaimer I'm not a dog expert. I'm not a dog expert, but I have trained numerous dogs for, for myself and for people as well. Yeah, and all, all champions all champions so i'm going to give a little, a, a little brief um a brief insight to how i how you do it it depends on what you're looking for and i think everybody looking for the same thing basically what people are looking for a dog that goes out and finds the animal no matter where it is, you don't have to walk them where the animal is for them to find, a, find an animal, to raise an animal. Everybody looking for that. And secondly, they're looking for a dog that back and pen. So what I do when I train dogs, puppies, if I, if I, according to the age that I acquire them, I do, this is one, one of the methods. You bring them in. You get them crossing water comfortable, make sure they're crossing water, jumping over logs, this, this different kind of stuff. You're not going to hold them and make them do that and you're passing in these places. You're passing by through a river, you jump across a river, let them pass through the water, get accustomed to it. So when you start hunting, you don't want them to stop by a river and barking, or you don't want them to stop by a log and barking because they can't cross. Because it might sound funny, but I've seen big dogs do that, stand up by a river and and making noise because they can't cross standing by log because they can't cross they don't know how to, to maneuver they don't know if they jump up or to jump over or if they pass around the log so this is how i just do it with puppies even if it's a a big dog according to the age acquired same same kind of procedure this here is just a kind of familiarizing how the actual color uh, but are also teaching her to be somewhat independent she don't have to depend on me to walk her to where she wants to go. So I sit, let her go and explore, use her nose a bit, figure out what is dangerous, probably pickers and whatsoever. When she passed two, three times, she realized, hey, this thing's piercing my skin. She will know to be careful when she smell, smell the picker, because I have nose, right? So you see, she went out, walk around. Come back to check now. Which is also a good training as well. She'll know to whom 
to come back to find you back using her nose right so yeah and you familiarize them you walk them so so they'll know so when you actually bring them in a hunt they wouldn't it, it, it's not it wouldn't be something strange to them you not bring them and just dash them in a hunt just so and expect them to go and chase with dogs you get them familiar with the bush get them exploring get them moving around get them using their nose get them using their brain yeah she's she turned five months two days ago so now it's a good time to walk her yeah let her get accustomed to certain things yeah so back up to the, to the to the making of the dogs when you're making dogs if you have dogs that they do they do everything they go out they make the distance they find animal wherever there is they're running the, the animal you don't have to walk them through and you have some other dogs that will walk with you until dog raise and well they will run right through when they're training dogs and they're trying to bring up a younger generation to get better a better hunting pack you leave home the dogs that you have to um they stay by you until dog raise you're leaving them home that's one of my tips and my tricks that i just use I leave home the dogs that will actually wait around a little a bit for dogs to raise. I just call them backup. Them is backup dogs. Because them them not going out and looking for it. I just try my best not to keep much of them in my pack at all. They just, they just, they just, they just have a purpose in the pack, but I just try my best not to keep too much of the dogs doing that. You go out, you find the animal. Wherever if it have one goody in a five mile radius. If you go out on Guti, you must find that. If it's a one tattoo in a five mile radius, you must find that. I'm not supposed to walk here to go and find this animal. So, if, when you come in, you find a seat, a comfortable spot, and you let the dog them explore. They might go far and switch, but they will, they will get, they will get accustomed to going away from here and feeling comfortable enough to go away and knowing that when they come back, you will be in the same spot they could find you back. It's kind of tricking their brain into believing that when they go, they will always be able to come back and find you right in the same spot but of course they'll be able to come back and find it but they wouldn't be in the same spot but once they learn to go out and they do have that separation anxiety as they go as they miss you they want to come back to look for you no this is why you're training them here by coming and sitting and let them go out and explore you don't need to call them call them every minute as they miss them here you call them Ooh, no don't do that and, and you make sure you familiarize them from home that the song that you, you want to use to call them when they're missing or if they're lost you familiarize them from home while they're, while they're at home when you when they when they call when they see they're coming back to you you can make the song as well like how she going out there when i see her coming back if i want to teach her the song that i'll use to call her I'll, I'll, i could see that as well get them familiar familiar with the song that you'll be using so when you call and if you're lost and you're calling them they'll stay out probably a couple of days if you do have a tracking color or whatever circumstances and the loss and you go back some them young dogs as well as older dogs just get wild when they stay out for a couple of days. So when they call them and they hear the song, they want to run. But if they're familiar with the song, that you think that that will be a source of comfort for them. So they'll be coming back to you as well. Right? Another thing as well. Well, I just touched on teaching the, the younger generation to do better. In other words. So if you have, I wanted to elaborate a little more on that. If you have dogs that, as I say, well, them is back up. They stay waiting until dogs raise to go. When they train the younger dogs, even if the other dogs need them dogs to, to kill, yeah. When they train dogs, they're not necessarily train them to kill immediately. They train them to go and do the correct thing. So, good girl, good girl, good, good. All right, let's go somewhere else and explore. All right, so she go out a couple times. She come back to me. Taking the opportunity to walk somewhere else it's already after five. So play school and knives. Yeah, so right yeah, yeah. If, if even if you need the other dogs in the park to kill, when you train any dogs, the younger dogs, and you want them doing the correct thing and going out and switching and staying out, you, you start carrying them with the dogs that are doing that up front. And when you realize they pick it up properly and they're moving comfortable. Then you start to bring back the rest of the rest of the pack. When they, 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 they wouldn't just stop go out and switch because they bring dogs that not staying dogs that staying around until the dogs race. Once they get a customer going out, they're going to go out too. So you could get back your whole, your full pack in the bush and back to hunting as normal. So that is a mistake a lot of people just make. 
They're bringing in young dogs and they have 200 dogs standing by their foot. So the young dog think that it's okay. So they want to be a locho too. They're waiting by your foot for dog series. And then when the dogs that are custom going out and raising, if God forbid, the old age or something happened to them and they pass away, you have a set of foot walkers and you're looking to buy dogs. You're thirsty all over Facebook looking for dogs to buy. Because why? You lose one of your best, you lose your best dog in the pack. All the dogs are supposed to be able to pull slack. If you have a female that is your best dog and she in heat, then you had to stop on until that dog come out of heat. That doesn't make sense. So you always try to train a younger dog to be the next best thing. So if you have a 10 next best thing in your pack, you could always function to suit. You don't want to um, heavily rely on one dog in your, your, to, to control the entire pack. Because most of the time when anything happens to that dog, it, you, Men just get a spawn and they want to stop hunt all kind of thing. They want to do all kind of thing. She's smelling something. Watch. She's smelling something. This is the spot where holy manico denied the little female that I uh, release. She was about to climb up this big English mortal. Are you smelling me? Are you smelling here? It's smelling. Yeah. So, you're trying to create a, a better generation than the last generation. So, you're always thinking, so that when I'm making dog, that's what I just do. So, if I'm making a dog for somebody, well, when I used to make dog for people, I stop that now. When I carry them, I carry them with my my dogs, them that going out. As I release them, I want them to leave me immediately and go out and sleep. So, I'm bringing them with them dog alone. And when they start going out, then I could bring the entire pack. When they start going out on their own and doing their own thing, I can bring them to a pack something she's smelling. Could be a goody. Come to drink water. Yeah, I can bring them into a pack once they start doing what I want them to do. So that's why I have no problem in training dogs. A lot of people find it hard to train dogs. A lot of people don't really understand dogs. And it's, uh, breed have a lot to do with it. You don't know the breed. Foxong is a dog that tend to go out and search more and search further. Foxong like to make real distance and search. Yeah. So, most of the time when you have a dog that going real far, miles away and raising, most of the time it'll just be a Foxong or they have some, some strain of Foxong, some Foxong in them. So that's why you want to teach the next generation, the correct thing. Look, she just learned learn about danger. Some tack tack. Some, they put some, no, they're not tack tack, they're hunting ants. They put some bite on her, so she, she will know now. She learning. Yeah. So, her father, was a dog that I trained with my, my dogs and them. He he won out a field trial and he, and our next field trial well, he won some trophy in that field trial as well. Yeah, he learned from some of um, my best. And when I was training him, same thing I do you now. The dogs that I had some other dogs trained for myself, I leave them home. I give I give him first first priority. I leave home the dogs that I was training, they, they would have wanted to stay around a little longer by me before they go out to search. So I left them home, brought them with the strikers only. And that's what he learned. And that is, the, that is his style of hunting as he releases me. He goes out, makes the distance, finds, finds the animal. I still have one of the dogs. One of the, 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 the dogs pass away of old age. But I still have one and hopefully I'll be using him to train the daughter as well. He makes distance. He don't care how far he is. And he's a big land fox. Again, he has fox on him, so he'll make the distance and find the animal. So this this video is just not, not everybody will appreciate this video because this video is more of a teaching video of the people who are looking for knowledge and who don't even think they're looking for knowledge, they will learn something here. This video is more of a teaching video. Yeah, so you try not to teach dogs 
about walking. You know, when you're walking dog, you want to walk German Shepherd. Them kind of dog that is for walking on the, on the road, you walk in a park. When you have hunting dogs, you bring them and you allow them to hunt. You don't have to walk them for them to find an animal. You have to walk direct on top of a goatee back. You have to walk direct on top of a tattoo to get a tattoo raise. That doesn't make sense. She now settling a bit with the color on her neck. She's getting a little more custom with the weight. Come on, I'm fix it. Yeah, your neck's too small for the color still. You still have a, a little growing to do. Only five months. Normally when she don't have that color, she's gone. She's not staying close here. So, yeah, I hope that this video was educational and helpful to the people them who are willing to learn and some of the older ones who who willing to change. I hope it was helpful to all you as well. When you hear pausing and talking, I'm not looking for you going to show Because eh? since season open, I take out you going to put and I only catch one you going to that is because my cousin sees behind the house and he call me. I may make a going to hunt yet. I just think I just catch one to make a little bubble. I mean, you know, I not I not sell when I don't catch the sell. So yeah, I hope this video this video was beneficial to the ones that need it, and it have some older people that need to change their, their method too. Because I see a lot of older people walking dogs. So when you're going down in age, you don't want to walk dogs. You want to sit down and and enjoy it. chase. Okay, right. I thought that was the video, but every time I shut off the video, I remember in a point that I had to make. And next thing to take into consideration is all dogs are not the same. So don't expect one dog to do what the next dog used to do, or don't expect one dog to do what the next dog doing. All all dogs have different strengths, and all dogs have their weaknesses. So that by itself, there that makes a balance pack. When each of them together and they're behind an animal, they will chase an animal. That makes a balance pack. You can't have everybody wanting to lead. If you have 10 dogs in the pack and, and the 10 of them are, are leaders, you think in your, your book when you're doing the maths, that might sound real good. Hey, the 10 of them, them animal can escape. But yes, the animal will escape because 10 of them want to run different, they, they, they show differently. 10 of them want to lead. 10 of them want to, to, to play their fiddle to suit them. So you might find 10 of them they would not pack together, they want to split up, they want to run different so it does not get a good hunt at all it does not get a good hunt at all so yeah, that is something to take into consideration everybody had a strength and weakness it will have dogs that will chase an animal real good they will pressure an animal real good when an animal hide they might stay out to search they might come back and meet you and wait for the next dog to find back the animal and then they will go back and pressure it again that dog may have to get rid of that dog that dog will make that dog balance in the pack then it will have the dogs them that not coming back until that animal is found. They balance in the pack. They had a job to do as well. And it will have the, the dogs them that may not run for long, but when they're getting a chase, the animal have to take a hold because they're, they're fast. They're driving the animal, they're speed and drive. They're driving the animal. They're, they're putting up the animal quickly. So they're hitting the animal at, at, at a 500 meter dash. If you take pen by 500 meter, they'll come back, they'll catch their breath. And when the animal pass across again, they do the same thing until the animal, the dogs just do that. And, and they, they are successful at it as well. So that's why you have to have a balanced pack. So not every time a dog is not a leader, you have to, you have to get out of your pack. You have to have a balanced pack. Everybody have to have their, their, their own strengths. Everybody have to have their own strengths. So that is something to take into consideration as well. And our next thing, before I cut off, our next thing is you have to know how you, what dogs you're running together. Because Foxong tend to be a faster dog. Blue tick, I know the Coon, the, the Coon Hong family, Blue tick, Red tick, Walker, um, Red Bone, the Black and Tan Coon Hong. All them Coon Hong them tend to, will tend to run at a similar pace and rate. So it's always a good idea when they're hunting Coon Hong, hunt them in their own bracket, their own category. Because Foxong will tend to stretch them, half on, pot on, that people like to do the little half on, like me. Um, they will stretch them dogs them and stress them out. It could shorten their life too as well because they, take, they will take a lot of hits. Because they're fighting to run at a pace that is not, not natural to them. And they, they tend to hit up themselves a lot. They tend to, to bruise up themselves a lot. 
So that's why you just have to take that into consideration. You just have to take that into consideration. You can't um just run all different type of dog in your pocket. I mean let's do it and let's be successful. But let's put a lot of strain on these slower dogs. So that is the one thing I wanted to leave with all you. Yeah.